Hi guys, uh, welcome to the last uh, part and part two of the series of videos I have been making on passage planning in polar ice regions. Um, along with this video, you should watch the previous videos on passage plan and the links are provided in the description section below. Um, please watch those videos. In this video, I only focus on the tactical planning and the appraisal required for passage planning particularly in polar and Antarctic and Arctic ice regions only. So we'll start with tactical planning because we did appraisal and monitoring uh, before. So the tactical phase of the passage planning uh, begins as the vessel enters into the polar ice regime or into the region in which the ice may be encountered. Detailed and up-to-date information must be obtained at frequent intervals if ice is along the route. If detailed information is not available, the navigator will have to fall back on strategic passage planning methods and information and proceed with extreme caution. Once the vessel is in the polar ice region, current regional ice and weather information is of the utmost importance. Sources for data will include navigational and positioning data, weather imagery and information, ice imagery and charts, ice service and ice operation centers as well as communication sources. I'll talk about each one of them briefly as we go along. The mariner needs to be aware of the possible issues that may be encountered with onboard navigational equipment such as the gyro compass, magnetic compass, the GPS when you are transiting higher latitudes. Inherent errors may be experienced on account of high latitude, possible loss of signal, magnetic anomalies, chart datum errors, poor chart, bathymetric accuracy, and other factors. I have discussed all these in separate videos. Please go and watch my playlist on bridge equipment where I have talked about um, the use of gyro compass and magnetic compass in higher latitudes. It cannot be overemphasized that recent and current weather and ice information is imperative in order to enable the best possible tactical decision making. What is just over the horizon or outside the visual horizon is as important to the ice navigator as what is within your sight. Regular contact should be maintained with ice service centers to ensure that the most up-to-date information is received and with operation centers for awareness of other vessels and support so that ice support vessels may be vectored to one's own position promptly if required. In addition to ice service and ice operation centers, ice support vessels and other vessels along an intended track may be able to provide additional ice information. Keeping communications open with ship and shore station is vital. We talk about strategic monitoring here and strategic monitoring has tactical planning, tactical appraisal and all that we talked about before. We talk about tactical planning. So tactical planning is route refinement is the actual day-to-day hour to hour and even minute to minute refinement of plan track and courses made necessary by changing ice conditions. Individual ice features identified visually and by radar are evaluated and decisions made relative to the planned track lines. Actual limits of pack ice, multi-year ice and the location and movement of icebergs are plotted for a possible route adjustment. Prevailing seasonal weather conditions and immediate local conditions are considered. Additional recent imagery can be referred to for comparison. The objective in this planning phase is to make final adjustments to baseline courses and anticipate actual tracks that are likely to be followed. Both baseline courses and possible ice deviation tracks should be plotted and care given to identifying navigational hazards and clearing lines for those hazards so that the vessel is not put at risk when deviating off baseline course to avoid the ice at sea. During the tactical execution phase, a high degree of vigilance and situational awareness is required. Double the watches. Radars switch to appropriate range depth and sounding equipment, either monitored more closely or alarm set. If required, you have both the radars and ARPAs on set at different range scales. As deviations are made in response to the prevailing ice conditions and actual track line changes, estimated time of arrivals for traffic services I support and own company should be revised and updated. This is the job of the master to continuously update the ETA or the estimated time of arrival to the contact person in the shipping company. 
whether operating with or without imagery, the latest weather and ice information must be continuously obtained and referred to. Ice edge and type should be fixed on charts if electronic chart systems in use do not allow for overlay of ice imagery or digital ice charts directly. As the tactical plan has become active at this point, the bridge team is now fully engaged in ice pilotage. The additional skills and knowledge required of navigators to navigate ice infested waters safely has been recognized since a long time. Today, international shipping is moving towards including ice navigation skills and knowledge in a global standard of training and certification. One thing that must be kept in mind is that hiring an ice navigator may not be the same as hiring a navigational harbor or river pilot. For example, in the compulsory pilotage waters of the St. Lawrence River, the coastal regions of Alaska and even the Baltic Sea, local knowledge harbor and river pilots may not have specific ice navigation knowledge. However, tankers operating in the St. Lawrence River are required to have on board ice advisors as defined in the Joint Industry Guidelines, in addition to pilots who are required within specified pilotage waters. With special reference to polar waters, there are a few regions that require compulsory traditional pilotage. Some Russian and Greenlandic ports require local pilots, but no Canadian or Antarctic regions require traditional pilotage. There is no compulsory pilotage in the Antarctic region. In the locations where local knowledge pilots may be required, these individuals may not meet the skills and knowledge required to navigate ice safely, and an additional bridge team member may be required. Depending on the region, a voluntary or compulsory ice routing service may exist in the area of transit. Commercial ice advisory and ice routing services are beginning to develop, but to date are not broadly available. The various national ice services may, however, provide routing assistance. Within the Russian Arctic, depending on the vessel's ice class, ice routing through the Northern Sea route may be required. No routing is presently available in the Antarctic. With the Canadian Arctic, the Canadian Ice Service may provide ice routing assistance on request. With this, we go into the ice transit decision process. At all times, the mariner should enter ice only if necessary, selecting open water routes if at all possible. Operating a vessel within ice infested waters requires consideration of additional factors in the continuing decision making process in the same continual feedback manner as any other passage plan. The primary additional factor is of course the ice and whether conditions are open with relatively little ice or close. I will talk about what is close ice or open ice very shortly. The ice transit decision process begins with initial assessment, taking into consideration factors such as general route visibility under present and forecast ice and weather conditions, location of ice edge, visibility, vessel ice class and capability, other traffic and availability of icebreaker assistance. Proximity of navigation hazards is considered as well. When considering ice information, charts and imagery, the age, reliability and accuracy of the information should be taken into account. Once the initial collation of information and its assessment is complete, the second stage of the decision process selects either the open ice or the close ice decision line. So what is open ice? We'll talk about that. What is close ice, static ice, etc. So open ice is ice less than 7 by 10 total concentration. However, for vessels with no or light ice class, careful consideration should be made before entry into ice regimes with greater than 5 by 10 of total coverage or if multi-year or glacial ice is expected. Generally, open ice conditions allow for most vessels to proceed as necessary while continually monitoring progress and updating ice information, avoiding where necessary areas of less possible ice concentration. During the transit of open ice, the vessel's approach, speed, ice class, draft and maneuverability must always be kept in mind. If close ice is encountered, the ice transit decision process reverts to the close ice decision line. The decision process in ice concentrations greater than 7 by 10 is divided into two decision lines, dynamic ice conditions and static ice conditions. Let's talk about static first. A concentration of closed ice that is static may or may not be under pressure. If there is no pressure, the decision process proceeds directly to the detailed consideration of ice types within the overall ice regime. If closed pack ice that is static is under pressure, the vessel should stop until pressure abates or conditions change 
while monitoring constantly and returning to the top of the decision process with assessment. If the vessel becomes beset, action should be taken to clear if at all possible and continues monitoring. Vessel speed, ice class, draft, maneuverability should be considered. When it comes to dynamic, in dynamic or changing ice conditions, three decision lines result, depending on whether the ice is opening, closing or moving due to wind and current. When it is moving, in a situation where the ice is moving or if initially there is little or no risk of ice beginning to close while moving, the decision process proceeds directly to the detailed consideration of the ice types within the overall ice regime and decisions made as appropriate. If the vessel becomes beset, action should be taken to clear if at all possible and continue monitoring. If close ice is continuing to close, in all likelihood conditions may continue to deteriorate. Rather than proceed, the vessel should stop, monitor the situation and if necessary or able to proceed clear of the ice so as not to become beset and return to the top of the decision process with assessment. In ice regimes that are opening with an expectation of continued open ice conditions, the vessel should be safe to follow the selected route considering its speed, ice class, draft, maneuverability, provided that all other safe navigational parameters have been met. The vessel will follow routes that are navigationally safe, continuing to monitor and update ice information, returning to the top of the decision process with assessment. In determining the ice safe routing, the decision process shifts to consider ice types and overall conditions. In considering the makeup of an ICE regime, in the decision process, the marina should consider two decision lines based on either open and light ICE conditions or ICE regimes that have multi-year or glacial ICE inclusions or presence of raging or rafted ICE. Opening ICE conditions with numerous leads and only first-year ICE may pose little difficult or threat. Considering own vessel speed, ICE class, draft and maneuverability, the vessel may proceed slowly while monitoring and returning to the top of the decision process. If operating with an icebreaker, the decision process may follow the opening decision line. However, it should not be forgotten that while under escort, the vessel remains under the direction of the icebreaker master or commanding officer. If multi-year glacial or ridged and rafted ice is evident or expected, it will be necessary to specifically identify and plot locations of these ice types or features and avoid if at all possible. Considering own vessel speed, ice class, draft and maneuverability, the vessel may proceed slowly while monitoring and returning to the top of the decision process. Throughout the decision process, accurate meteorological and ice information is of great importance. The marina should consider wind speed, direction, duration and its effect on ice, the visibility range, presence of fog that may obscure the ice, not allowing you to see it, sea state that might obscure bogey bits and current set and drift and its effect on ice. Remember that even the Titanic had an accident with the iceberg, although the master of that vessel was very experienced. So make sure that you never underestimate ice conditions or polar regions. And before going into the polar areas, together with the principles of passage planning for any normal route, as described in the links below, also follow these considerations when you are going into ice areas. Keep your ship safe and thank you for watching these videos. Let me know what you thought about this. Bye for now.